Okay, let's talk about the integral circle. By that I mean the integer points satisfying my polynomial equation. Now this, for example, lives in CQ and CR. And in principle, you can use ideas coming from either of them to find integral points. Of course, in this case, uh, it's super easy. We can just find by staring at it that x squared cannot be larger than 1, y squared cannot be larger than 1, and that already gives you all solutions. But you could also put your circle into, well, you could draw your real circle and then see how it intersects the integer lattice. You'll see that it intersects it at these four points. Now, this is not, uh, this was not very difficult, but uh, in general, when you have a polynomial equation, even in two variables, as we do here, so a plane curve, and you ask for the integer points on this curve, this is an extremely difficult problem to solve. So it's an open problem, people are actively working on this. Okay, so this completes the more or less uh, geometric version uh, of our study of the circle. Because one could have seen the z points and q points, the q points and r points, r points and c points, so all of the, them nest inside one another. Now we're going to look at points that do not nest inside this uh, geometric circle. So now we're going to study uh, our circle over the finite fields. And this is related to the integral circle in the sense that I've been, instead of plugging integers for x and y, I'm going to plug in residue classes of integers modulo primes. So we're going to introduce or recall the field fp, which consists of the residue classes of uh, 0 through p minus 1, for instance. And I'm solving for c of fp, which consists of x and y in fp, such that x squared plus y squared equals 1. If I write x, the point in fp, as the residue class of an integer, where a, b are integers, let's say, and square brackets denotes residue mod p, then I want to find a squared plus b squared equivalent to 1 mod p. So this is a problem that's related to the integers in that sense. However, as I mentioned, these points do not inject into the set of integers, in, in particular to the integral points of the circle. Um, so it's less geometric in that sense, but it still makes sense um, to ask another kind of question here, where because my field is finite, of course the set of points that satisfy my polynomial equation is going to be finite. And then a natural question to ask is, how many points are there? So how many uh, points on my finite circle, uh, CFP? Let's look at one example. So this is, I would call it case zero. We have to study this problem case by case, but there will be three cases. The first case is very simple, P equals two. So in this case, uh, x squared plus y squared can be written as x plus y squared because the term 2xy is 0. In fact, you can do this identity for any field of characteristic 2, not just for the finite fields, uh, not just for f2, I mean. And for f2, I can I realize that 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, therefore squaring does not change the value, so that I can write this as x plus y, and I want this to be 1 mod 2. And of course I'm solving a linear equation, and this is now clear. If I plug in uh, y, I can solve for x, but in any case, we see immediately that cf2 
consists of two points, 0, 1, and 1, 0. But in some sense, both of these points came with multiplicity 2. So the answer is either 2 or 4, um, depending on how you count it. Okay, now let's move on to the more interesting cases. Now the case 1 will be the cases where minus 1 is not the square residue of an integer. For example, um, p equals 5 would not work because minus 1 is 4 and 4 is evidently a square, whereas p equals 3 is okay. Now in this case, I can actually borrow what I did when I was trying to study the rational points on my circle. I can just say, well, remember the maps that I just constructed? x, t, y, t. Those were 2t over t squared plus 1 and t squared minus 1 over t squared plus 1. So this defines a map um, from fp onto the circle minus the north pole uh, just like it did with the real case and you can see uh, this by first observing the xt squared plus yt squared purely formally just by operating on this uh, rational functions is 1. In particular it works of course over fp and the reason I didn't want t squared plus 1 uh, to be 0 so minus 1 better not be a square. So this now gives me a map from fp to c of fp minus the north pole and here I take t to xt yt. So the, these points will satisfy my polynomial equation and conversely I can write xy goes to as before x over 1 minus y. So this is again a formal inverse and it will work. This means I've established a bijection between the set of points on my circle and fp, uh, modulo this one point. Therefore, as the number of points on my finite field plus 1 for the north pole, and this gives me p plus 1 points. Let's move on to the second case or rather case number 2. Now minus 1 is a square residue. Let um, psi be a square root of, my, of minus 1 in fp. Then what I can do is to write x plus y squares as x plus psi y <coughs> times x minus psi y. So I factorize this equation and I want this to be equal to 1. Let's continue here by saying this is u and saying that is v, so as functions of x and y. Uh, clearly, I'm trying to solve for u v equals 1. So neither u nor v can be 0. Uh, u and v can be any number in fp except 0. And then, uh, for instance, v can be written as 1 over u. So if I plug in a value of u, the value for v will be determined. So it looks like there are p minus 1 solutions. Uh, just to clarify, observe that x is going to be u plus v divided by 2 and y is going to be u plus v divided by 2 psi. That means that if I find how many solutions there are to u times v equals 1, then I can find how many solutions there are for my equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. Now, clearly, u has to be in fp minus 0 and v is completely determined. Uh, therefore, there are only p minus 1 solutions. In other words, the number of elements in my set cfp is going to be p minus 1 and they're parameterized by invertible elements in fp that I plug into u, solve for v equals 1 over u, and then uh, solve for x, y. The number of points in C of fp 
is either going to be well, 2 or 4, however you count it, for p equals 2, and then p plus 1 for minus 1 a square residue mod p and p minus 1 otherwise. So minus 1 not a square residue and now minus 1 a square residue you get p minus 1 parts. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed studying these many perspectives of the circle. See you at the next lecture.